All right, it's time for our special guest. This gentleman uh, is gonna uh, talk to us here with something that affects everybody, not only in this room, but watching at home on uh, Channel 11. He is the CEO of Valley Metro. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Steve Banta. Steve. Thank you, sir. Okay. Good to have you here. It's good to be here. Welcome to Mesa Morning Live. Uh, is this everything you thought it would be and more? Absolutely. Very, very good, well, uh, well thought out answer there, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, that whole thing about Mike Picard, do you know Mike? I do not. Oh, well, it would have been funnier to you if you Probably. knew him. Probably. Um, well, tell us, where are you from originally, Steve? Uh, born in Cincinnati, raised in Kentucky. We make a, a very big distinction in that neck of the woods. I've been to both. It's, uh, Kentucky's actually the fun part. It is. It's, it's right across the water it, there. That's where all the, the nightclubs and the fun stuff happens. Ohio has the better hospitals, so we go get, we're born there. They take our booties, throw them in the river, on the way back, never put shoes on again. <laughs> That's how it works. Well, I was going to ask you why you moved to Mesa. Now I know. I, <laughs> Shoes. <laughs> she wanted to have shoes. Well, well, cool. I know your purpose for being here is to talk all about the light rails. So uh, I'm just going to give you free reign and you tell us, tell these fine folks what you'd like for them to know. Well, I appreciate that. I, I, you know, being able to partner with the city of Mesa and the business community, particularly the chamber, is exciting for us. We are building three and a half miles into downtown Mesa. We're going right to the front doorstep of a lot of the businesses that are in this room. We appreciate their understanding. We appreciate the chamber support leadership from, from council. Um, as you drive down Main Street, you see an indication of, of the work that we're doing. It's going to be that way roughly for about another two years. We'll be in operation in 2015, and everybody will forget about what's going on right now. <laughs> I like that. What's your background? I'm, I'm curious, how, to, how does I somebody was, get to, to I, your level? Actually, um, interestingly enough, I started as an electrician fixing rail cars in San Diego. Prior to that, I was an electrician in the Navy and got out and thought about what am I gonna do with the rest of my life and was at an establishment uh, that we usually frequent in the Navy. And <laughs> someone I know there said, like you know, there's a, there's a, there's a guy at the, uh, at the end of the bar, I mean, at the table over there <laughs> <laughs> that uh, you might wanna talk to. So I go and I talk to him and he said that, uh, you know, they're hiring down at San Diego Trolley. So I went down, I took a test, and they hired me as an electrician fixing trains 27 years ago. Wow. 27 and a half years ago, I, I married the person that introduced me to the person at the end of the bar, I mean the table, <laughs> and we've been married for the last 27 years. Oh, well, that's awesome. Good yeah. for you. Good. And how long have you been in Mesa? Uh, actually, I live in Phoenix, but I've been in the Valley since January of 2010. Okay. Uh, transitioned down here from my most recent job was Portland, Oregon. I was the executive director at TriMet, the Public Transit Authority in Portland. I've actually uh, ridden on that. Have on you? That in, in yeah. Portland, sure, that's a beautiful. And, and boy, what a boon that's been for Portland. It has. It's, it's done very, very well. Uh, and we're looking for big things here in downtown Mesa. As you all probably know, there's a number of uh, development opportunities that are happening uh, in downtown Mesa. We're able to connect now three downtown cores, Mesa, Tempe, and Phoenix, with light rail. We're in the process of expanding uh, out to Gilbert Road, which, you know, according to the mayor of Mesa, uh, will be a game changer for the, for the community here as it relates to providing opportunities for mobility and, 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 and rides for, for light rail. Okay, I was just thinking, you said you transitioned from Portland, Oregon to Phoenix, Arizona. That Talk about a cultural change. Did you, did you stop and throw your raincoat into the, into the uh, river? There, I, I, I have a couple of interesting stories. I was only here... I came in January, so it was probably first week in February, and we had a rain here, uh, a rain. And I'm standing at the street corner, I got off the train, I'm standing at the street corner to walk across the street, and this gentleman comes up to me, and, and he's, he's rubbing my arm. And, and I stood back and I looked, and I said, he says, where did you get that raincoat? I said, Portland, Oregon. He said, no wonder it's so nice. You'll never find a coat like that here in Arizona. <laughs> we have a lot of guys that will come up and rub your arm. <laughs> Anybody on the front row look uh, familiar? No, no, not yet. Okay. Not yet. Well, the, 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 morning is, the morning is early. Um, well, that's cool. Well, so tell us, I know we had a map up there a second mm -hmm. ago that kind of shows where it is now. It's actually, a, there's a good story behind that map. When I first came here to the Valley in 2010, 
Uh, as most of us know, we, our transportation service is very compartmentalized. We, on our transit map, our system map, if they could put it back up, really demarked city boundaries, the boundaries of Mesa and Tempe and Phoenix and all the other great cities in the valley, and didn't really showcase the, the transit line. So what we've done recently with the help of our marketing and communications group, we've revamped that map, and now we demark the routes so you can connect yourself uh, the other map. You can connect yourself from one side of the valley, say Surprise, down here to Mesa via public transit. And what we do now is we call that transit map, Transit Without Borders. And we're really starting to talk about the importance of connectivity between the different communities, not worrying about the boundaries, but worrying about the rider that wants to take a trip from downtown Mesa to downtown Phoenix for the symphony, or downtown Phoenix out to the Mesa Arts Center. It, it provides that, that, that mobility for folks. That's great. Boy, with uh, $4 a gallon gas, it's, uh, it, it, it really makes sense. It, it, is, it is very economical. We provide a good service, uh, $2 uh, full fare, uh, $4 all day pass, uh, and great opportunity. We've got great operators and maintainers that, it, it, that uh, take care of our equipment. You get first class service when you jump on Valley Metro. That's great. What, uh, plus, I'm just thinking of all the things that, uh, you know, that I do in a car while I'm driving that I shouldn't do. That I, You're uh, free to do them, most of them. Yeah, exactly. Most of them <laughs> on public transportation. I, you know, text, send a fax. Whatever you need to do. Put my makeup on. Uh, some do. Shave my legs, all those things. Some do that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Um, now, tell us about the, the, the Gilbert Road Extension. Gilbert Road Extension is, is really uh, a, a great story, particularly for the city of Mesa. Um, uh, this is the first time in the valley where a city has transitioned arterial or road money to a transit project. Typically, there's a firewall between the two. You build roads with this bucket of money and you build transit with this bucket of money. Well, Mesa took it upon themselves to, to fur some of the arterial road projects they had to expand uh, light rail out to Gilbert Road. It's another mile and a half, mile points, 1.7 miles and about a $130 million project. So we're really fortunate to have the leaders that we do in Mesa to be able to see the need and the economic opportunity that comes with the advancement of light rail. Great. Um, I want you, uh, we're gonna have a, an opportunity to ask any questions, so I want you to be thinking about, um, about those. What's your vision for the uh, future of light rail and transportation in general for the, for the greater uh, Valley of the Sun? Well, as you know, the transportation system in Portland was very robust. And coming here to the Valley, I thought that it was a great opportunity to come down and advance transit here. It was a system uh, that needed to be pushed further to its extremities. What I like to call it is the total transit network that we're advancing. And it's not just the light rail system, which you see there with the different phases that are gonna be constructed, built, and operated but it's also a robust bus system. It's a bus system that connects people to light rail. It's a potential for streetcar here in the near future, a potential for commuter rail. And then overlaid over that is a, a very mobile paratransit service that provides connectivity for our most needy folks. And when I look at advancing transit in the valley, it's, about, it's not about where the money comes from, it's about the rider and the ridership on the system and supporting the advancement in a way that it would be served. So I have a very specific question here. What's the value of transit for those who may not be able to use it on a regular basis? Uh, it's, a, it's an option, it's a choice. We all like choices today, whether it's, whether you're at the grocery store or at the market or at the ball game, you like to be able to pick your seat, pick your beverage, pick your, what you're gonna eat. It's again, an option for you uh, periodically to decide to leave your car at home and take transit. And if you live in a place that transit doesn't serve, it provides an opportunity for less congestion on the highway as you're driving on the 202 or any of the main arterials here in the valley. So how can, uh, how can the citizens here and at home watching on Channel 11, what can they do to help? I, I, I appreciate their support, understand more and more about what we do, uh, go to our website and see the updates on all of our projects. And if they have any questions, you know, support what we do. Come to the fare box, try our service, and then talk about your experience with, with your neighbors and your social circles or your elected officials, the importance of what we provide. So in the very near future, well, somewhere down the road, 
someone will actually be able to travel f if they want to go to Sky Harbor Airport. Yes. They'll be able to go from how far east will they be able to travel from? Well, in 2017, they'll be able to get on at Gilbert Road and go through downtown Mesa, through Tempe, and connect a SkyTrain there at 44th Street Station in Phoenix and, and go right to the airport from the 44th Street Light Rail Station. And actually, at the SkyTrain airport, you can now check your bags if you're flying on particular airlines and get rid of them right there at the SkyTrain airport at 44th Street. Has anybody been on the SkyTrain yet? Just opened a couple of days. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Funny, I, I thought you might have been the guy. Uh, very cool. Well, um, nice. let's open it up. And uh, I'm sure people have, I'm sure everybody's business has been or will be affected if you're in the, in the Mesa area by the, uh, by the light rails. Anybody got any questions? Now, is that, a, is that an actual photo? That is an that actual is. photo. That is, yes. That's beautiful. That's a sleek looking, uh, very it's a nice looking train. aesthetically pleasing. Nice looking train. Yes, John Barry. Wow. <laughs> Let me explain good, who asked good, the question. Good question. He's, yes. You know, good, John. Good question. I, I think there's, there's a couple of opportunities. It would be in Prop 500, which would be after 2026. It would also potentially be light rail, but could be commuter rail, as ADOT is advancing studies of inner city rail between Tucson and Phoenix, and one of the... Um, alignments or corridors you're looking at comes up right through Gateway Airport. Yes, right. The, 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 if, you don't, if you don't mind, if you could repeat the question for people that could be there. Uh, the question was, was, what is the plan after 2026 for Gateway Airport and the East Valley, the further into the East Valley? And there's, the, at this point in time, the plan is not laid. When I say 2026, I mean that's the next authorization for, for a tax referendum to be able to fund transit for the next 20 years. So the alignments and corridors have not yet been identified to support Prop 500, but we are in the process of starting to think about what that might look like with all of our eight, uh, local agencies, whether it's MAG, City of Phoenix, Tempe, Mesa, all of our member cities. By 2026, aren't we going to have jet packs and stuff? I mean, I, I used to watch the Jetsons. I feel cheap, you know, cheated about this. Uh, yes, you had another, I saw a question, yes. Uh, I want to thank the person who did not break my Google Uh, the question was, uh, the builders seem to be uh, more attuned to the business community here as we construct through their downtown cores. And, and I, I appreciate that comment because it is somewhat disrupt, disrupt, dis, disruptive when we construct through the downtown core. Uh, I know in, in Portland, when we constructed in the downtown business area, it was, it was difficult. Here, what we were able to do over the first 20 miles that were built develop a number of lessons learned. Every community is different in their sensitivities to, to how we advance transit and transportation. So what we were able to do is, is, is bring together the lessons learned, provide opportunities for the business community here in Mesa to come and meet with the business communities in Tempe and Phoenix and talk about what their experiences were and how the business communities actually survived the construction, which provided really a 360 degree view of what to expect and, and I'll say here in the May 1st, we're going to start constructing heavy right in the downtown area, always mindful of our business community, making sure that their door is open, working with them uh, on behalf of, uh, of patrons and, and opportunities for them to continue work and allow traffic to move in both ways, but continue to construct in the downtown core during the summer months. And we had another question. Dave, you just covered it? I think I saw it. Yes, Scott. Yes, sir. Is there a, is there a strategy to stop the... 
no, there's not a plan because originally the system was designed with open architecture to be part of the community. One of the things that we work really close with with the city of Mesa is to make sure that while we, uh, as the transit provider, think that everything revolves around light rail, the city of Mesa and their leadership recognizes that light rail is just a part of the city makeup. And we want to incorporate our light rail system into their pedestrian-friendly plazas, bringing the downtown community to the downtown area and to be able to access our system. Some think, and, and a lot of it is, is perceived, that because there's no barricades like a Washington DC system or a Chicago system, that people ride for free. We have a lot of folks that ride our service that have monthly passes or prepaid tickets that you really don't see having to go to a ticket machine. And we have recently just uh, contracted with Allied Barton our fair enforcement and security uh, contractor, and we have 58 officers now that are positioned throughout the system, whether they're at the platforms or on the trains, engaging with our customers, educating them on the proper use of our service, and then, and then um, enforcing if they don't pay their fares. But we're finding good dividends, good comments through customer service, that they appreciate the fact, particularly the fare paying folks, that we're out there holding people accountable to pay. So it's a good message, and thank you for that question. Any other questions? If not, and you can still come up with one, um, what, are, what are misconceptions that people might have about it? I, I'll be honest, I haven't ridden it. Are there things I can or cannot take on there? Can I, can I have a bag full of food when I get on or no? No. No food? People, people do. Uh, we, we discourage eating and drinking uh, on the trains. Okay, well then uh, I'll we would never... Like we would like to have closed containers if they have their coffee. We recognize that sure. there are vendors and, and so forth in and around our system, and we support that, particularly if you're a business commuter or, or an event commuter. You're going to have a beverage or two at, at times. Uh, we, we deter alcohol, uh, but we can't tell what's in a closed container, so uh, just put a lid on it. Note to self. Um. <laughs> Are there other things you can, what's, what's the largest, can I take a, uh, I can take a briefcase, can I take a you, kayak you on You can, that? we have strollers, no kayaks. We have <laughs> strollers, bicycles. We have a lot of oh, people. Really? Uh, we, have, we have bicycle hooks in the center of the trains and quite frequently they're full. And what we find from our bike community is that they're, they're very appreciative of the service. And they also recognize the inconvenience of someone maybe in a suit standing next to someone on a bicycle. So they're very cautious about where they put their bikes. And sometimes you'll see them in other places of the train other than the hooks, but it's because most of the hooks are taken up. But bicycles, strollers, shopping carts, not the big ones, but the small ones that, that, that people utilize. Strictly from a time basis, is it comparable commute time if I, uh, if I travel by car or by light rail? Depends. Yeah. Depends on where you start and where you finish. Uh, we like to say that you know, our commute time today from here in Mesa to downtown Phoenix is probably about 40 minutes in terms of a transit ride. Depending upon the 202, yeah. it, it could be that if you're driving in, depending upon where you come from. One of the things that we're currently working on uh, with, with, with some of our, our engineering folks is figuring out ways in which we can get to downtown a little bit quicker because we recognize the sensitivity of time and we have to compete with the automobile. But more importantly, we're competing now also with the pedestrian and bicycles and so we work in concert with, with all of those modes. Okay. Anybody else got any questions about uh, maybe, or do you have any other general misconceptions that people have about? I think the first one that the gentleman brought up before about people riding for free because there's no barricades is a big one. Uh, it's not as complicated as one might think. We have a website that you could go to if you wanna look about taking public transit from any part of the valley to any other destination, and it gives you very direct directions on how to engage with the system, how to pay your fare when you get on the bus or the train, where you buy your tickets, what to expect. So there's a lot of information on our website that folks don't look at. And what is that web address? That's www.valleymetro.org. Valleymetro.org. So good to know. Um, well, you've been very informative, and it's great to know that if, uh, after you walk out the door, if we have a question, we can go on, on that website. Absolutely. Last call for questions. Anybody? Thank you so much. Thank I you. really appreciate you stopping in. I Thanks. appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Big round of applause, please, Mr. Steve Banta.